Mark McCulloch, thank you so much for joining me on Hospitality Talks. Um, for those of you uh, out there that don't know who Mark is, Mark, do you want to just give us a quick introduction to you, yourself and Supersonic? Yeah, a, a man about town, I suppose. A, but basically, brand marketing, digital, social, employee engagement consultant for hospitality. I think that covers it, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So Mark, you know the format that we've taken with these, it's three questions, 10 minutes, and I'm gonna start off by asking you, for Supersonic, what was the initial impact of coronavirus and when did things start to change and what changes did you see immediately? Uh, whoa, there was a lot in that. I mean, I, I think um, it, it started off uh, slowly, you know, in terms of the effects, it was just like, all oh, right, this is happening, business will be down. So this was maybe week one, let's call it, maybe about five or six weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, right, what are we going to do to get as much business as we can, reassure people, you know, for my clients, reassure people we're doing all the right things to, to keep the staff safe and the customers safe and the product safe and all that. So I was kind of busier then, you know, so that was kind of, you were actually going up the way. And then... I think the second week, maybe a couple of weeks before lockdown, you started to see that that was the week that it just felt weird. Mm -hmm. And London felt edgy. I mean, I can only yeah. compare it to any time there's been like terrorist activity or something like that. There was just something in the air, you know, just, it, you could tell, you, you know, people were giving off this this feeling. Um, and then it was just things were getting cancelled. You know, I think the actual moment was I was having a lunch with them, um, both hospitality and there was a bunch of CEOs around the table and Byron and color shows and everything. And that was the first time where everyone was doing, I don't know if you, don't know if you remember it now, the Wuhan handshake, you know, where everyone's kind of like kicking feet, like kid and play and the hip hop guys. Yeah. Um, Did you think at that point that we would lock down? I, I thought it had to happen. You know, just what had happened was I was out with, I can't really say exactly who, but I was out with someone who's very high up. I'm intrigued. Um, I, I was out with her brother, just an absolute chance meeting, right? And that was the week before, and he was, you know, just discussing of how things might go. And, you know, nothing confidential. It's just, you know, from other countries, this is what's happening. We're likely to follow. And I think the conversation was happening where we're three or four weeks behind Italy. We we're a few weeks behind Spain and, you know, they were going to fall into line and doing that. So all of a sudden that was just that everything just got cancelled. And even the last couple of lunches you had, and this was before lockdown stuff, it just felt a bit weird. You were being, you know, and then I think my biggest concern really was I had quite a lot of invoices out to come in. And I was like, oh, if they get paid, then you know, maybe even into some tax money, we should be okay. Um, and, and, and then, yeah, just before lockdown, people started to just shut everything down. So, like, that meeting's not happening, that project's on hold, um, you know, that that kind of stuff. So I'm kind of lucky, I think, in the, the way the Wheel of Fortune was spinning, it sort of just stopped at the right time for me. There was a natural end to a lot of projects anyway, and there wasn't loads lined up, you know? So, kind of fell in an okay spot. But then, you know, a few other things happened was, I just I said, right, I take it works over. Now uh, I could see hospitality union was happening with Jonathan Downey and Kate Nichols. And so tiny bit kind of in, involved with at least following that or giving comment or whatever. Then I got asked to be on BBC News for something that I got, then got binned because the, the schools were closing so you know the news agenda was changing um but you know then i wasn't really worried about me or or you know my business or anything like that it, it was just how could i help you know it flipped to that narrative of just just how could i help and so the I, second question being about how you did adapt where do you sit now what's what's your focus now i mean what what, what does the business do yeah <laughs> well it's definitely a charity <laughs> Somebody called me a not-for-profit yesterday, and I thought, yeah, you're right, we suddenly are. <laughs> um, well, I, I think it was just a natural instinct, and you know, there was a couple of cool things happened in the background. So, one was um, the hospitality union uh, WhatsApp groups that you know 
must be two or three thousand people got onto. So I thought that's a force for good using the knowledge and the network that you have. Then uh, there was a couple of other people, um, you know, Anne Elliott, James Haken, Mark Stretton, Wireless Social, you know, a few of the guys, and they, I think Anne pulled together like a wee WhatsApp group, and that sort of inspired me to go, well, what, what can we do? You know, I think it was, we can't sit and do nothing, was Anne's comment, and it was like, well, what can I do? And it's like, I'm probably going to be rubbish at doing food banks, or, you know, I, I, I could maybe do something different or use the skills that I have. So there was no thought put into it in terms of I'll be giving away my life secrets or you know what I've done over the years or it was just like why would you not do that? So I, I just I've always been thinking about e-learning courses anyway. So this what does the perfect marketing playbook look like, you know? And I threw everything and actually we we should do one on, on insights actually. So um, you know, basically we've got brand DNA, marketing planning, local marketing, digital social, purpose, um, SEO, PPC, you know, just the whole gamut, you know. And it was like, I know so much, so I can give that away. Mm. And then I've got friends that know more than I do in certain places, so I'll get them to talk about it and I'll just kind of interview them. So it was the other Monday morning. It was a wee bit sunny in the back garden and I was feeling quite good. Um, Mrs. Mike was on lockdown uh, with what we thought was it. Um, and I just got the, the iPad and a tripod out and I just thought, and actually I was thinking about Kieran Bailey, the, the, the boy Bailey, and he does his sort of almost half rap, sort of Bronx style yeah. rap the camera. And I thought, yeah, just let's go for it. And if I muck it up, I muck it up. But did it in one take, did 13 tips of what I thought you should do. And I yeah. thought 13 is good because it's unlucky and you know, it's unlucky at times and stuff. And um, put it up and it was probably one of the most thanked for and, and recent shared thing. It's probably well laid out of date now with everything that's happened. Um, but yeah, so just got it up there and, and got it out. So that was the start. So now most days I'm trying to put up a video or a thought piece or something to help. So yeah. Brilliant. Well, we'll make sure when we post this up on socials later on today that we put the links to those up um, for anyone that's watching um, because Mark is incredibly knowledgeable and if you can get some of his insight and advice for free, then, then I would definitely recommend doing so. Um, so Mark, then a, a final question for you. You know, your business is very different now from how it was a week ago, from how it was two weeks ago, three weeks ago. And as you say, I mean, I, I read a, a paper at the weekend um, I read Sunday's Saturday's paper on Sunday and it was already out of date. And I was thinking, God, this seems like a week ago and yet these things don't matter anymore, you know. So what does the future look like for, for you, for Supersonic and for the industry? Um, I think people like you and people like me are going to be more needed than anyone. And I think this could be the death knell for big agencies, you know. And I think the way that we do business you know you get the senior talent you're very agile you can adapt um and i think this is going to accelerate that model mm. and i think what you're going to see is so many people uh you know the ones that are in trouble are going to go mm. and the people that want to stay or have brands worth saving are going to need to invest because this is going to be the biggest relaunch in the history of the world and for everything else that's going on, aren't boy, aren't we lucky to be part of this? Yeah. It is one of the most exciting challenges that you, if you love your job and you love what you do and you rate yourself, this has got to be the most exciting brief that you could ever have. So why wouldn't you want to be part of that? Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. And I do, I think you're right about the agility. I think that the, the, the when it comes to an agency point of view, um, if, if you are agile, if you are small, and, and if you're willing to take a few risks as well, you know, if you are going to give away your content for free, if you are going to give away your research for free, you know, the fact is people will remember what small agencies like us did uh, now, they will remember it then, you know, and in the future. And, and hopefully that means that our client base will be, you know, possibly even broader and more eclectic than it was before, yeah. because there'll be areas that we're playing in that possibly we weren't before. So I think that's, I think that's really interesting. Well, thank you very much, Mark. As you know, we do try to keep these short and sweet. Um, not that I would ever call you short, but you certainly are sweet. So thank you so much for your time. And I look forward to catching up with you really soon. Easy. Thanks, Mark.